Hey, it's NPR's Book of the Day. I'm Andrew Limbaugh. There's a certain type of worship band at a church where if you see that the guitarist has a pretty sizable pedal board, you know you're going to be hearing something that sounds a lot like U2. Praise bands love U2, and it turns out that's not an accident. Bono is out with his new memoir called Surrender, and he talked to NPR's Rachel Martin about the connection between U2's music and Christian hymns, as well as his faith. And faith here is an interesting word. I'm not sure he'd call himself religious. He says in the interview that religion is something people use to beat people over the head with. Instead, the discussion suggests faith for Bono is a little more mysterious, a little more ineffable. It was 1976. An Irish kid named Paul Hewson was trying to figure a lot of things out. His mom had died a couple years earlier when he was just 14. Bono, as he was known, spent a lot of time at home in Dublin arguing with his dad and his older brother. But two goals kept him focused. To win over the heart of a girl named Alison Stewart and to become a rock star. And get this, in the same week, Bono asked Allison out, she said yes, by the way, and he ended up in Larry Mullen Jr.'s kitchen for an audition. Two other guys were there, Adam Clayton and David Evans, also known as The Edge. The four of them would go on to become one of the biggest bands of their time, U2. By the way, Bono's still married to Allison Stewart 40 years later. I wonder if sometimes we do have what we need around us that's there. I I certainly felt and have continually felt that the people I need are right there. Bono writes about these foundational relationships in his new memoir called Surrender, 40 Songs, One Story. I wanted to focus on another constant in his life that's central to the book, his faith. He was never a mass on Sundays kind of Catholic, but from a young age, Bono was fascinated with mysticism and ritual and Jesus. You write in the book... If I was in a cafe right now and someone said, stand up, if you're ready to give your life to Jesus, I'd be the first to my feet. Yeah. Did your band share your, your focus, your preoccupation with faith? They still do. At first, Adam was just like, oh, man. He had just one thing in life, just wants to be in, like, the badass rock and roll band. And like, oh, my God, he won't write songs about girls. He's writing songs, oh, God. But he stood by me, you know, and stood by us in our devotion. You know, I mean, could you imagine Ireland in the 70s? It's a civil war, all but a civil war. The country's dividing along sectarian lines. I I was very suspicious and still am a little suspicious of religious people. I mean, religion is often a club that people use to beat someone else over the head with. And we learned that. I learned that at a very early age in Ireland. You write that a lot of U2's music, though, is grounded in the feeling, the emotion, even the structure of a hymn. Yeah, Edge's his family were Welsh. Um, if you've never heard crowds singing at a Welsh... Irish rugby match. The stadium filled with song and they sing these huge hymns. You know, bread of heaven, bread of heaven, God made to life that we'll support you evermore. And it's in him, it's in edge, those fifths. And that's the feeling we've been looking for in our music. Yes, we like we want punk rock. We want it to be brutal. We want it to be tough-minded. We want it to have big tunes. But the ecstatic music is sort of part of who we are. Still haven't found what I'm looking for. You say explicitly in that song, there's some kind of root of that. Yeah. That's a gospel song. It's a psalm, uh, if you want to. Uh, What's a psalm? Sorry, did I not pronounce that right? Psalm. It's a psalm. Is that how you I say it, know. Rachel? You're so posh. I'm from Idaho. I don't know <laughs> if that's my particular dialect. The psalm.
your dad said um, near the end of his life that the most interesting thing about you was your spirituality, was your religion. My faith, yeah. Your faith. He was brilliant. He had faith and he lost it, you know, just, and people do, just when you need it. You know, he was dying. And uh, I write in the book about going in to see him and I was reading him bits of scripture and he was kind of giving me the hairy eyeball. It was a little bit, ugh, knock it off, will you? You know, and I was so sad for him that it, he didn't have that because he had always said to me things like, you know, this stuff, this God stuff, I, I don't experience that, but you shouldn't give that up because huh. it's the most interesting thing about you, he'd say. It was, a, again, a classic Bob I mean, Houston. was that sort of a, a, a slight to you? I mean, no, yeah, but he was... He was <laughs> you're a, this musician. And, and now you're picking it up. His, his compliments would arrive either with a tickle or a boxing glove, you know. And I remember when we were recording U2's first album, he's like, uh, you know, what are you doing? And I said, I've just been recording the album. And he's like, you've been doing that for weeks. <laughs> and I said, yeah, it's three weeks. This is the last week. And he says, how long is an album? And I'd say, it was about 40 odd minutes. God, you get it right. Get it right. <laughs> After 40 years of selling out arenas as a musician, trying to eradicate hunger and AIDS as an activist, Bono is ready to admit he hasn't gotten it all right. And the Dublin kid who's always been the big voice at the center is ready to hear what others have to say. Just shut up and listen is kind of where I'm at at the moment. I just need to be more silent and to surrender to my band. It's been... At the core of what I'm trying to do with my life, surrender to my wife. And when I say surrender totally, I do not mean making peace with the world. I'm not ready to make peace with the world. I'm, I'm trying to make peace with myself. I'm trying to make peace with my maker. But I'm not trying to make peace with the world. The world is a very unfair, deeply unfair place. And I'm ready to rumble. I'm just keeping my fists up for that one. The book is called Surrender. 40 songs, one story. Bono, thanks for talking with me. Thank you.